Good morning, observers. Today we've got the disintegration of a comet, an incredible study identifying galactic ripples of the current sheet, and we'll introduce yet another brand new Earth change here directly related to the ongoing magnetic pole shift. Let's start with the last 24 hours on our star where things remain very quiet. The sunspots continue turning out of view, next ones are still behind the limb. Those double solar shock waves we've expected are late, but magnetic signatures in the phi angle suggest they are slowly approaching. Would not expect significant geomagnetic storm conditions, and until new sunspots come over the limb into view, the top watch shifts to the filaments. Several of them here, but they are pretty small. I'd say today and tomorrow are about as low risk as you can get during a sunspot maximum cycle. So let's take a peek at those sunspots. Big ones departing to the right, still waiting for the next set to peer on the left. Blank Earth-facing longitudes. In fact, we may not get any significant solar wind enhancements until this coronal hole impacts us over on the left. That dark patch is the coronal hole we discussed yesterday. It'll be facing Earth about Monday. Solar wind should arrive towards the end of the week. Slight sidestep here. Folks, over the last couple weeks, we watched Comet Atlas swing into view onto Soho Lasco C3 after it passed its perihelion. It showed up on stereo ahead HI1. But while we were in awe at its display, astrophotographers here on the ground were noticing something. The comet's head wasn't brightening. In fact, it disintegrated. The comet is now dead, and the remnant tail is now spreading into oblivion. Up next, folks, a great study here identifying the vertical oscillations, the mini ripples, the current sheet waves of the galaxy that are far more numerous than the spiral arms. It's odd it actually doesn't matter how those ripples form, only that we know where they are and what they're made of. For example, we favor the galactic magnetism explanation for their appearance. This paper looks at tidal impact from a satellite galaxy doesn't matter, as long as they're there. They are high-density, dusty plasma electric fields that contain the galactic magnetic reversal point. They are far more numerous, again, than the spiral arms, and they deliver the galactic magnetic reversal repeatedly to stellar systems throughout the galaxy. It's what's happening to our solar system right now. Lastly, on the article front, sister studies came out this week identifying and characterizing chorus waves in a place they shouldn't be found, in a place they've never been seen before. Instead of finding them in the magnetospheric interaction zones, they found them in the neutral sheet. That's more than weird. The discovery warranted these two works in nature because of its unique and shocking nature. Folks, this is the kind of large-scale shift we expect in this ongoing geomagnetic excursion. Let's go ahead and add it to the list with everything else. Folks, now that the Suspicious Observer's name is retired, we are doing that one last run of the Suspicious Observer's gear. If you have any of the old gear that says Suspicious Observer's and not Space Weather News, that's pretty rare stuff now. Link below to get part of the last run with the old name, only available until January 31st, and based on the last two days, they are not going to last that long. Link is below, and also don't forget to come see us in person. There is a Pole Shift Disaster Cycle Conference at Observer Ranch today, and then of course, plenty more events this year. Pick a date, come see us, and it starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.